What's going on guys? This is Martyrs Brigade 99 coming to you once again with another session of Dark Souls PvP. Alright guys, we're back at it for part 2 of my Random Invasions video. Alright, like I said before, nothing really special. Um, this whole multi-part series is basically themed after uh, describing my own personal Random Invasions builds. Now, like I've said plenty of times before, right, especially if you guys haven't checked out part one, I love random invasions. It's my bread and butter. I enjoy it more than anything. And, you know, I just figured, you know, after just doing some random invasions with my invasions builds, I just said to myself, you know what, why don't I just do uh, a showcase of my own random invasions build, right? Because, I mean, a lot of you guys have seen my dual build. I mean, perhaps I might even review my dual builds in a later series, but this first series is just going to explain my invasions build. This is my cleric. Soul level 105. All right, just like a lot of my other builds. Soul level 105. Nothing special about it. The only thing is, is a pure cleric. Pure meaning. I'm not using any weapons on this build other than a mace and a crescent axe. Now, one thing I will say, if you guys are kind of getting bored with your little, you know, try-hard min-max builds, and actually in the event that you guys may be, may be new and you don't really know what I mean by min-max, it's kind of like you use, you know, let's just say you use a uh, Chaos Blade build, right? You, you can, that's, that's like a perfect example of a min-max build. You know, you have 16 strength, 40 index. You know, you use the minimum for your best little try-hard armor set, and then most of you know most of the rest of it you just pump in vitality or something else. Super min max. I mean, you can pretty much do anything with a min max build, and it's basically easy to win with a min max build because you almost can't go wrong. But you know, one thing about me, I don't like things that are too easy. I enjoy a challenge. Challenging, to, you know, challenges are exciting to me. So if you guys are getting kind of bored, one thing that I would challenge you guys to do is to try some theme builds. Because theme builds in most cases have limitations. Right? You won't have a lot of poise, you know, case in point. You know, I get some haters who will talk a lot of crap about my um in, you know, my role playing videos. You know, and the funny thing about it is, I'm thinking to myself, like, dude, you know how many limitations I have on this build? You know, kind of like my uh, uh, Kirk, you know, when I play Kirk, Knight of Thorns. You know, I get people say, all you do is R1 spamming, or all you do is R2 spamming, that's all you're doing. Number one, Kirk has a lot of limitations. You know, Kirk doesn't have a lot of poise, I think he has 40. Kirk doesn't have a parryable shield, right, so I have to switch off from the shield to my bare hand to parry. Kirk didn't have any pyromancies, nor do he have miracles, nor do he have anything else. Right? So for all you guys that just... Well, I don't kind of want to say that on, <laughs> on the video. But if you guys just like crying about anything, just go ahead and try some themed builds for yourself. And this is my own. Now, pros and cons. I have 40 in faith. I have enough endurance to be able to use the cleric set. Um, now, keep in mind, this is not the full cleric set. The gauntlets I switched off to the um, the Wanderers gauntlets, and I did that, you know, because it didn't really make sense to have all that weight when I really didn't need it, right? And so I just went on hand changed. But the rest of that is my cleric set. So I mean, I'm good to go. Forty in faith. I mean, I can use my mace and my crescent axe. You know, I can use Wrath of the Gods. As a matter of fact, I think I have 15 in attunement. So I can basically use four slots. I mean, I can use a buff for the mace. I can use I can use just about anything. So we're good to go on my cleric build. I mean, there's so many options on this thing. And this is just the 105 version. My 125 version actually uses a catalyst as well as, well actually not the catalyst, my uh, 125 version of my cleric build uses not only a talisman but also the dark moon catalyst. Right, so in other words I would have 50 and faith 
an 18 and intelligence so that I can use the dark bead. Right, so that's pretty much it with regard to my cleric build. And I love this thing, especially invading down here. You know, because a lot of people really don't expect to be invaded in Tomb of the Giants. And it's awesome, in my personal opinion. It's dark. I mean, granted, it may take some you, you know, getting used to with regard to the dark environment. But you invade here long enough, you'll kind of get to know it by heart. Right, but I mean, some of these situations you just can't help. Case in point, there's two guys here. I mean, I could jump over the ledge. I mean, I'm just getting backed off into a corner. I mean, you can't really do anything right there. <laughs> right, so GG's to those guys right there. All right, so enough about my cleric. This is my 105 pure caster build. Now, a lot of guys do not like my pure caster. So what? <laughs> um, nothing really fancy about it. This particular build uses a Velka's Rapier, as you can see. And it is a pure sorcerer. I mean, you know, if you kind of just look at the starting class of the sorcerer, I mean, I think that thing has like, you know, nine strength. And I think that's what I have on this build. Minimum strength to be able to use the Velka's Rapier. Um, minimum dexterity to be able to use the Velka's Rapier and the rest is pumped into intelligence. Matter of fact, I have 44 in intelligence. I think I have like 27 in endurance and either 19 or 23 in attunement. I can't really remember off the top of my head. I didn't write it down. I'm just kind of freestyling as I'm watching it. Um, so, pros and cons, I mean, let's just talk pros. I mean, I got all kind of sorceries, right? Just like dark beads to the face. <laughs> I got all kind of sorceries. Um, as a matter of fact, I think I have four or five slots. So, I mean, that's a pro. Um, I have a rapier, which is good for criticals. That's definitely a pro because in the times that, you know, I may have to take advantage of a backstab or a parry, I mean, I'm good to go on that. Right, so I get good critical damage with the Velka's Rapier. Um, besides that, I mean, you can't really go wrong. I mean, think about it. You have strong sorceries, and you have a pretty good weapon with high criticals. So those are the pros. Now let's just go over the cons. Number one, I mean, I don't really have a lot of defense on this build. Right, so it just kind of is what it is. Number two, let's just talk about the Velka's Rapier. Number one is split damage. Number two, the standard R1 and R2 attacks are super weak. As a matter of fact, I think if you guys pay close attention on some of my, you know, standard R1 and R2 attacks, you know, doesn't matter if it's one-handed or two-handed. You know, I only inflict, like, I think at most 200 damage. So a lot of my power come in these criticals. Backstabs, I think I get like 800 damage. Reposts, I get nearly a thousand. So, whereas I'm kind of lacking in the R1 and the R2 department, I kind of make up for it in the criticals department. So, we're kind of good to go right there. Um, so, you know, number one, like I said before, defense is low. You know, number two, our standard attacks are low. Um, another con. This build is basically limited to the rapier, right? Because at soul level 105 and still trying to have, you know, 44 and intelligence, you just really can't have a lot of weapons. Now, granted, a lot of these guys may have their own variation. We're talking about my own build. Now, once I start to, you know, explore some of these wiki spaces builds, then I'll give my own suggestion based upon, um, how I see it but these are my builds right so I don't really have to worry about um, switching off weapons I don't have to worry about any of that because these are the builds that I use I've already experimented with these builds a while back and I've basically already concluded that I'm not gonna do anything else with it now if you guys pay attention to the basic sorcery class you know not only will you notice that um, it has low strength but it also has a dagger Guess what? The brigade has a dagger. I have a bandit's dagger as an alternative. Because think about it. 
Um, I have low poise. As a matter of fact, I think I have 32 poise. So it's easy for me to get staggered. So in the event that I have to toggle escape, um, I don't have to worry about switching back. Right, I could just go ahead, toggle, and repulse with my secondary weapon, which is the bandit's knife. So I have a rapier as a primary and a dagger as a secondary. Um, so let's see. Uh, low defense, weak standard attacks. I think that's pretty much it with regard to the cons. Oh, here's another con. Boys. If you guys are not really good with, you know, toggle escaping, you might be in trouble with this build. Because I don't even think this build can sustain a two-handed halberd attack. As a matter of fact, I think you need 31 to be able to sustain a halberd attack. And maybe 36 or 37. Don't quote me for all you pros out there that know everything. Don't quote me because I could be wrong. Um... I think you need like 36 or 37 for a two-hand halberd. I can't remember off the top of my head. But I do know when I get poked with a two-hand halberd, I mean, I get staggered. All right, so if you guys are not really uh, comfortable with toggle escaping, you might be in trouble with 33 boys. Flat out. And the thing is, I'm not using Darkwood Grain Ring. Right? And, and actually, I don't have any builds that I dedicate to the Darkwood Grain Ring. Now, I do have builds that could use it, but I just simply don't like the flippy flippy, <laughs> right? I mean, I don't like fighting against it, and I don't like using it, because for some reason, when I put on the flippy flippy, I just want to just, you know, spam that flip, you know? Even when I wouldn't normally spam the flip, I just feel like spamming it, just because I can, right? So no flippy flippies. You're just going to have to deal with the 33 points. So GG to that good old victim right there. He's good to go. With the Dark Wraiths, my brethren. Alright, so I have an invader right now. And actually... Uh, he kind of spotted me. I was hoping that he flew by so I could just hit him in the back with the Crystal Soul Spear. So let's see what this guy's got to offer. It looks like he's got the bloated head... Standard katana. Okay, no big deal. And you guys notice I got 900 damage with the Velka's Rapier. So like I said before, it just affirms what I was saying about, you know, whereas I'm kind of sucking in the standard attack department, I'm doing pretty good in the criticals department. Alright. Just out of reach for that Crystal Soul Spear. And he's going to go ahead and revive himself. So, one thing about him, he don't have, you guys notice that? Was that 132 or 152 that I hit him with the poke? 125, okay, I can't really see those numbers, but you see that? 132, I think. So, I'm not really doing anything, and he's not either. <laughs> BS for the win. All right, so... This will be the last clip in part two. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed part two so far. We basically reviewed uh, two builds. My Soul Level 105 Cleric and my Soul Level 105 Sorcery. I mean Sorcerer. It's my mage. My tricky mage. Right? I like to use a lot of Chameleon on this particular build. So, um, that's pretty much it. Like I said before, we're going to do a couple more builds. And then after we do a couple more, I will go ahead and start diving into some of these character build suggestions on the wiki spaces. Alright guys, so hey, until next time, Martyr's Brigade is out. <laughs>